realize if someone doesn't look at me and say something, it means I'm not wearing the right thing. A uh, friend of mine told me that he said, you know, like I understand why you explode with all these colors. And I'm like, why? Because you grew up in Silesia. I was raised in Silesia, a very industrial, grey place. My mother's brother, my uncle, he used to register in New York. And he would send the parcels, packages, you know, to Poland. And if he would send anything valuable, it would be taken away. So he would send us a lot of fabrics. And that, at the time, you know, and even now, there's all good seamstresses in Poland, so we were able to have seamstress to make clothes. But at the same time, the clothes were always you know, really beautiful and colorful and different from everybody else. So even as a small kid, I started getting a lot of trouble from kids like, what are you wearing, what colors? And, and then at the same time, I developed my way, what I want to wear. It's a long, long path um, between learning how to crochet and actually crocheting for different purposes and finally art. I started when I was a little kid. It was like an hour experience of crocheting. And I learned how to crochet and I stopped it. I was 17, I shaved my hair off, I burned my bra, and it was November. It was so cold, I got sick immediately because I didn't have the hair to protect my, you know, my head. So I'm like, hmm, I have to make a little hat. So I did, I crocheted, I started crocheting these little white hats for my head. I actually, you know, I make clothes um, for my different openings, usually. So this I made for the reopening of this show. Uh, that was happening a month ago together with Johnny Rosa, Rosa show that you saw downstairs. So this stuff I made out of uh, this twine that you see these pieces here. Because very often I use, this yeah. material, I use the same material that I use in my artwork for my clothes. And I really like this twine because if you take this top off, it still kind of stands out. It's very rigid. And, uh, and these parts were actually part of my installations a long time ago. This is a lot of different stores. It become bigger, shorter, and different colors, and I add things to it. I made it a few years ago for the opening, and then it keeps changing and transforming, and I'm adding things to it. Well, those jeans, actually, I, I went to visit my family. I, have a, I, have a, I go to Poland every time I have a show in Europe. Went to the old closet and found those jeans. They were like really shorts. And I really like this because they kind of like this 80s, you know, like these jeans. So I brought them to New York and cut them and then I crocheted this. Yeah. And this actually was the performance piece that I make for like, I made like uh, 12 different outfits that were like top and the skirt. And doing the performance, the performance would unravel everything but the movement. So this one was unraveled only to this part. So I kept it as the, as the top. And this I just made recently with this really rigid which always interests me, this nylon twine. So every single thing has, you know, a little story. And back, you know, behind you, there is a rather full of these wearable sculptures that are hanging there right now. But once you wear it, they're not only clothes, but they're actually a sculptures. So combining the fact that you can wear them and then the sculptures, they're wearable sculptures. And what was interesting for me, so this performance ring is so odd, right? And they're there, like, just standing. And not really, like, going to people to shake the hands, but really staying there with the hand. Suddenly this one guy walked by, and he's this, this really big black guy is walking by, and he's like, I know what it's about, I know what this piece is about, this is art. So he didn't know that I'm an artist, because I was kind of like outside, just making sure that everything works, taking pictures. So I came to him, like, so, so tell me what it's about. He's, you know, this is about peace. This is what Martin Luther King was about. This is about shaking hands with the strangers. And that moment was just like, I almost have tears in my eyes. You know, every time I tell the story, I'm like, I feel this energy. Cause he was your messenger, like from God or... a simple person just yeah. walking the street, never been to the gallery. I can, I can swear that probably. And it might be funny for people, but in the same way, if this is the way how modern relationship looks like, we are not living in a great world, you know? Oh, I so if agree with you. Somebody spend time to like text me. I pop a nice big zit on my back. Just now, the same one I think you saw a few days ago. If someone has so much time, amazing. Writing the text message to me. It's really worth to spend a few days to crochet and show to the world that we're not supposed to live in this kind of world, you know? Or um, I don't really buy clothes, you know, like uh, unless. 
I, I need like, you know, like, a, I don't know, I need underwear, you know, buy, but yeah, I don't buy my, my clothes. Walking here in Chinatown, Lolita, wherever, like, especially in this really weird part, people always stop me and ask me, like, and you know what's the funny thing? People want to touch me. So I was like, oh, oh, this is so nice. I'm like, this is like massage, you know? You just go with my clothes to the place and everybody wants to touch you and grab you, you know? And be like, how did you make it? It's so wonderful, you know? So it's sweet, you know? It shows how much they're craving. Yeah, and I really appreciate yeah. that. It's, it's, it's craving, nice. yeah. craving it. And they always know it's all it's because it's made by hand. So every single thing is craving things made energy, by hand. You know? yeah, oh my, my god, energy, yeah. So every single thing I put my energy It's so there. unusual now. Yeah.